Hello, everybody. Happy New Year, and welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. Today, I'll be going over the process of acclimating and adding freshwater mollies to our saltwater rack and rubble frag system. If you haven't seen the video about the rack and rubble frag system, you can check it out by following the link in the description below. So here we have our freshwater mollies in their temporary home, a five gallon bucket full of cycled freshwater. Mollies, unlike other tropical freshwater species such as platys, are a brackish fish that have the ability to live in full salt water if acclimated properly. Here you can see they are already feeding and getting comfortable in their five gallon bucket, which will be phase one of three of this acclimation process. The bucket is nothing special, I simply added the small hang-on filter with a piece of sponge and a 50 watt heater, and I'll eventually be moving the mollies over to their new home, the rack and rubble frag system that sits right next to it. Into the 5 gallon bucket I have added this absolutely fantastic vintage aquarium ornament found at a flea market, which is a model of what appears to be Mayan-esque ruins. It is there to give the fish a place to hide, but I think I'll eventually be growing GSP on this and adding it to a nano for my son's first saltwater tank. Step one of this process is an extended acclimation period. Farm-raised mollies are, have become less hardy over the years, so if you take the time to acclimate them slowly, you'll increase the likelihood they will all survive the acclimation process. And I'll accomplish this by keeping them in temporary holding for two entire weeks. And I'll swap out six cups of fresh water for six cups of salt water uh, every day, slowly moving the specific gravity closer to its target of 1.025. The salt water that I'm using is what was left over after the frag system's bi-weekly water change, so I didn't need to tap into my salt supply. I use red sea salt, which I like because it mixes to around my target DKH of 8.2 at 1.025 uh, specific gravity. Some of you will probably ask, so I'll mention that the 30 gallon frag tank that the 5 gallon bucket is sitting in is part of a future expansion of the rack and rubble frag system. A video to come on that as well. Fast forward, it's been two weeks of slow acclimation, so it's time to move on to phase two, which is a one hour drip acclimation to raise the specific gravity up those last two to three points to our target of 1.025. Through the magic of time lapse, we're about one hour in with a full one gallon container, so I'm going to pour off some of that salt water and place it back in the drip. And on to phase three, we have our five now saltwater mollies, two white, two orange, and one spotted. And we're just going to hang the container that is now at a 1.025 specific gravity off the side of the 15 gallon tank of the rack and rubble frag system. This one has a lot lower flow than the rack system which houses the SPS. Here we are testing the temperature of the water. When I add them into the tank, uh, they're not going to get blown around by the power of the pumps in the SPS system. You can see that these fish poop a lot, and that is part of the reason why I am adding them to the system. There has been a low nutrient issue um, not having fish at all, uh, except for the tang and uh, a wrasse. But I really needed to increase the bio load. I also, as we'll talk about later, needed to add fish that would eat algae, that would graze on algae. So here we are uh, with the mollies. They're just settling in, kind of hanging out in that corner, now hanging out in this corner, and just getting used to the new system. There is a little bit of flow in here, so they are getting blown around a bit, but not too bad. And they're starting to swim around, check out the back of the tank, 
see what's going on what are these crazy looking plants oh wait they're coral um, yeah these fish have never seen coral before so this is kind of interesting overall my feeling is that the fish are looking very healthy they're swimming around they're active and they're exploring um, I in the month that I've had them in the five gallon bucket and as I've been transitioning them over to saltwater I've noticed that they have grown so I have read a few places that uh, freshwater mollies stay smaller than saltwater mollies um, maybe I'm witnessing their growth or maybe when I purchased them they were younger fish but they have gotten bigger and their coloration has started to change a little bit here I'm just showing you how the smaller Corallias in the rubble system, the LPS system, just don't create as much uh, surface agitation as the SPS or rack system. And the idea is that I'm starting them out in the 15 gallon tank just so they can uh, get used to it. And then I'm going to move them over to the SPS dominated system, which I feel needs a little bit more grazing of the algae. And here they are. Um, this is actually a couple weeks later. And you can see a little bit that the, uh, the fish have even gotten bigger. And their coloration is deepening a little bit as well. You can see that the tang does not exactly know what to make of this molly. And the molly isn't sure what the heck kind of fish that is. So they're going to have to get used to each other. If I did add another tang at this point to um, increase algae grazing, the yellow tang would probably go crazy on him. So this is a nice way to introduce some algae grazers that that won't that get along with each other and will get along with the tang as well. And they have to get used to the flow in this tank. Uh, they kind of find the dead spots where they can hang out and swim around, but they seem to be doing that just fine. And they seem to get along with this tang just fine, so that's all good. So here we are a couple weeks later, and I wanted to show you that how the fish are eating, but also the coral and how it's deepened in color. It's really reacting to the fact that there are just more nutrients in the water, and it's healthier, more vibrant, and growing a lot quicker as well. These fish eat right out of your hand. They're actually great little pets. Full disclosure, we did lose one of the orange mollies. Not sure what happened to them, but the other four are doing great. And here you can see some of their algae grazing behavior. I have turned this pump off and I do once in a while so they can get a nice big mouthful of algae from it. And as mentioned in the description, the mollies are live bears and they have had babies. Here's one, and there's a couple more here. They've dropped down into the rubble system through the pipes. Um, they basically are coral food at this point because I have not figured out how to raise them up yet, but I probably will get a breeding net or something so that I can um, raise more healthy saltwater mollies. A little bit more of the coral. Again, a couple weeks later, and the coral's just blowing up with growth, getting even more colorful. Uh, I've started to frag and make um, smaller plugs so that I can spread this stuff around to other hobbyists. And that's exactly what I was trying to accomplish by adding these mollies to the tank. I wanted to increase the overall bio load and add some more nutrients to the system and just uh, add some fish that would get along with each other and add some interest and personality to the overall system so that when people come down to look at these tanks, it's almost as interesting as looking at our display tank upstairs. Overall, this has been a great experiment. I love having the saltwater mollies in the rack and rubble frag system. They add nutrients to the system, they graze, they were cheaper than uh, buying uh, tangs that wouldn't get along with my yellow tang anyway. And if you're looking for a nutrient and algae grazing solution for your saltwater aquarium, I highly recommend you try saltwater mollies. If you enjoyed this, please do hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.